The principal elements in a stepper motor control system include the stepper motor itself, the device that powers the stepper motor, called a drive or translator, and the device that directs the translator, called an indexer. A full PC-based motion control system, such as one that may control a machine tool, also has an application program that interacts with the human operator. Breaking down the control system into clearly defined and understandable portions not only makes learning more enjoyable, but also aids in designing and troubleshooting. This video concentrates on the stepper motor and its translator. A stepper motor is an electric motor with an internal structure that is capable of holding its output shaft to one of many positions. The internal electric windings are structured so that the motor shaft can be moved from one position to an adjacent position by activating the windings in different ways. Stepper motors are manufactured with multiple magnetic elements spaced equally around the motor. The most common number of divisions for industrial stepper motors is 200. Stepper motors are manufactured in various sizes and capabilities. Here's a small size 23 stepper motor. The device that is used to apply power to a stepper motor is called a translator. Translators are also manufactured by numerous sources, in various sizes and with different capabilities. Choosing the appropriate step motor and translator is the subject of another session. However, most translators function very similarly. Once you grab the concept of stepper motor translation, you will be more capable of adapting the type of translator that most fits your needs. Translator manufacturers are generally most helpful in providing information relating to the type of stepper motor that can be used with their product and how it is wired. This demo uses a very common and simple type of translator of the two-phase variety and a four-wire hookup between the translator and the stepper motor. It is point-to-point -point wiring, and once the stepper motor is correctly connected to the translator, Detailed understanding of how the translator performs its job is inconsequential to our purpose here. It can be considered a black box in the sense that it receives controlling input from one end, resulting in motor shaft rotation as the intended result. Most translators are controlled by two input signals. One is called step or pulse. The other is called direction. Sometimes the direction line is labeled clockwise slash counterclockwise or CW slash CCW as shown on this translator. The part of the control system that provides these signals to the translator is called the indexer. Ability Systems Indexer LPT software uses industry standard parallel ports, commonly called printer ports, to generate these control signals. Here is a plug-in adapter card that supports two parallel ports. Here is the same card installed in a PC. Contacts on each port can generate control signals that translators will accept for input. The translator in this demo accepts 5 volt pulses. We will use Ability Systems Indexer LPT diagnostic program to demonstrate what a pulse is and how it is used to control the translator. The electrical term pulse describes a change in voltage from one level to another level and back again. In this case, pin 2 on the printer port is being used to generate negative 5 volt pulses, which means that the voltage on pin 2 will normally be at 5 volts, transition to 0 volts for the duration of the pulse, then transition back to 5 volts again. An easy way to visualize this is to generate very slow pulses from indexer LPT and observe the output from pin 2 using a voltmeter. Using the indexer LPT Diag program, I'm setting the pulse rate to one pulse per second for indexer LPT's jog command when it's used to generate the pulse signal on pin 2. The ground reference is pin 25. Indexer LPT generates pulses with a square wave. This means that when generating multiple pulses, the voltage is low about the same time as it is high. When set up for a pulse rate of 1 pulse per second, the voltage on pin 2 will lower from 5 volts to 0 volts for 1 half second, then return to 5 volts. The next pulse will start 1 half second later. The time occupied in sending each pulse, which is the pulse period, is 1 second. The oscilloscope shows the change in voltage over time. Here the sweep time is turned down low enough for you to see the voltage reading trace for all five pulses. 
Here the pulse output from the parallel port, pin 2, is connected to the step input on the translator. Pin 25 on the parallel port, which is ground, must be connected to the translator's ground reference as shown. A small pulley is attached to the output shaft of the stepper motor, marked so that you can see it rotate. Notice that the motor shaft increments from one position to another with each pulse. Without power applied, the stepper motor shaft generates little resistance to movement, but when power is applied, the shaft resists turning. To troubleshoot a malfunctioning system, with power applied, first make sure that the stepper motor shaft resists turning. Then generate control pulses from the indexer and see if the pulses are reaching the translator. Since indexer LPT generates pulses in a square wave, when the pulse rate is slowed, you can test for the presence of the pulses using a voltmeter. If pulses are not present at the translator, you can isolate the problem by testing for them directly at the connector to the indexer as shown here. The voltage level of the direction control line determines whether each pulse rotates the motor shaft clockwise or counterclockwise. In this view, a yellow wire connects pin 3 from the parallel port, which is the indexer's direction control output, to the CW slash CCW input to the translator. Here we will be observing the voltage level of this signal using a voltmeter. As its name implies, the direction signal determines whether the motor shaft will move clockwise or counterclockwise. When the direction signal is 5 volts, pulses applied to the step input move the motor shaft in one direction. When it is 0 volts, the pulses applied move the shaft in the opposite direction. Here we're using indexer LPT's jog command to move the motor in one direction using a positive value for the number of pulses. The positive value causes the indexer to present 5 volts on the direction line. For the other direction, a negative value is used to designate pulses. The negative value causes the indexer to present 0 volts on the direction line. Though the voltmeter needle is a little delayed, here you can visualize how the state of the direction line affects the way the pulses are acted upon by the translator. That completes our introduction to translators. To recap, the translator responds to an electronic pulse by moving the stepper motor shaft by a tiny amount. The amount of motor shaft movement per pulse depends on the motor and translator that is used. The motor and translator used in this demo responds to each pulse by moving the motor shaft 0.9 degrees, requiring 400 pulses for a complete revolution. The status of a second input called the direction input, determines whether each pulse moves the motor shaft clockwise or counterclockwise. In the following session, we will discuss the indexer portion of the system, how it controls speeds, acceleration, and the coordination of motors to perform complex tasks, as well as some other things. A few basic concepts about indexers can be extremely helpful in simplifying system design and maintaining control systems. Subsequently, we will also cover how an application program can hide the functions of the indexer from the human operator, interacting with both the human operator and the indexer to accomplish smooth, efficient, and predictable machine control. <laughs>